What's going on guys? So some of you know, I did end up getting the Fantech podium that you see right here. And there's the Fantech CSL Elite. And then there's my TGT right there. So I just wanted to make this video and I wanted to give you my opinion on driving with this wheel for the past week and a half. Now I've only owned belt driven wheels. Well, I mean, aside from the G29, I've had a G27, G29, T300, uh, TGT, CSL Elite, and now this. So I wanted to kind of compare after all those wheels that I've had, you know, is it worth it for you to go from a belt driven wheel to something like direct drive? Because it is a big jump. And there's a lot of little things that I've noticed within this week and a half that I didn't even know were possible. So I wanna to try to explain those things the best way that I possibly can, because honestly, unless you're sitting right here and you're using this wheel, you're never gonna really know exactly how it feels. So I'm gonna do the best I can to try to explain to you those pros in getting something like this. Now, before I get started, I do wanna mention that if you do currently have a PlayStation 4 wheel like the TGT, CSL Elite, T150, it is going to be compatible with PlayStation 5. So don't worry, you're okay in that category. And also before we get started, another thing, something I noticed right away is that if you play a game like a set of course, a competizione, the game that you choose to play will ultimately decide how much force feedback you're going to get. There is a major difference between playing Gran Turismo Sport and a set of Corsa Competizione in terms of force feedback. So if you do end up upgrading and getting a direct drive, keep in mind that it's probably wise to try a different game because the force feedback is completely different on different games. Now let's kind of get into where the podium comes in. You know, why would you purchase this? What is so great about it? Why is it you know, more than double the amount of money? Well, the first thing that I wanna point out, we're gonna go over a lot of little things that maybe you didn't even realize. Look at something very strange here. Do you see that? Do you see how this wheelbase is pitched? You see how it's like pitched up when I go to the side? This is actually coming up, it's like slanted up like that. And if you look at this, it's the same way. You see how it pitches up? Well, that is one thing that I noticed that was completely different about the podium. It's completely straight. You know, it's com it literally completely straight. So I had to pitch this. Do you see like down here? There's a piece of metal there and a little bit of, you know, rubber to kind of raise this thing up a bit because this was too low in my seating position. So just know that if you do want to get this wheel, it is perfectly straight. It's not pitched at all. And that is the first wheelbase that I've ever had that didn't have the pitch. And it kind of caught me off guard. So if you do have a rig or whatever and you you know, don't realize that this comes up, it might feel a little odd to you at first. That's just something that I did, that I did experience. All right, so I just booted up the TV here and I wanna show you guys something. Now I know I could make this better quality and I could record it and show it to you on a better screen, but I just wanna get a point across here. Now this is a lap that I was practicing for, this is Daily Race B, this is Dragon Trail. And I was purposely doing a hot lap on this track with this with this wheelbase. And I did compare it with the, other, with the uh, TGT, but there's something that I noticed using the Fanatec and I want to, I want to point it out. So just, just pay attention. Do you see, do you see how close I am on that line right there? Okay. When I was doing this lap, I was purposely trying to use as much road as possible. Now, normally when I'm using the Fanatec CSL Elite or the TGT over there, Normally, is that gonna focus? There we go. Normally when I'm using those wheelbases, I kind of keep distance away from the wall because I don't feel that the wheel is precise enough and I feel like I might smack the wall. So here, I purposely get really close. I mean, I'm getting as close as I can, trying to use as much road as I possibly can, right? And I'm confident, look, immediately going to the road, look how close I am to that wall. Now pay attention to this line, you see that? I'm purposely sticking on that line right there and getting as close as I can. Now, whenever I've used, like I said, a CSL Elite or I've used a TGT, I have never had that confidence before that I could stay that close to the road, that close to the curb and not hit it. So what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say to you is that having a wheelbase like this, having a direct drive, it does give you this sense of confidence. You have this confidence and precision knowing that you could stay really, really close on that line and not hit that dirt. I've never felt that before. So the precision that you will find 
on a direct drive is out of this world. That is the biggest difference that I've noticed. Yes, it's very obvious that, you know, the force feedback is much stronger on the direct drive. That's obvious, but to be, but to be fair, I don't really use heavy, heavy force feedback. I mean, I have the force feedback set on this thing at like 40, like 35, 40, that feels good to me. Anything that goes heavier than that, where it gets really, really heavy, it just becomes to a point where I can't turn the wheel fast enough and I just don't need that much force feedback in order to put a good lap in. When you're playing a game like GT Sport, for example, which really doesn't have the same force feedback as a set of course of competizione, but what you'll notice is when you turn up the force feedback in your settings, the turning itself like this, just going left and right, this will become very, very heavy, but I don't want that. I don't want this turning to be heavy. I want this to be light. So it feels like I still have power steering, right? I want this to be light, but when I'm turning and a bump happens, boom, I want, I want to feel that bump while this is still light. That doesn't happen. So what happens is you turn up the force feedback. This is so hard to turn and then the bumps come and you feel it, but you have to sacrifice you know, reducing the, the bump feel so this way this can turn light. You know, you don't really get that balance between the two. On this wheel, you can actually make this light and then the force feedback really, really strong on bumps and curbs and impacts and all that stuff. And that is a big deal. Okay, the next thing I wanna mention is build quality, all right? So if you hear this, you hear how plasticky that is, like all over it, it just kind of sounds like plastic. Same with the, the TGT. It's just, it's all made with plastic. So if you do that with, you know, the podium, listen to that. I mean, it's completely solid, right? And this is what you expect when you upgrade and you get something a little bit more expensive. You want it to be built well. Now listen to these paddles here. You hear how solid that is? Now listen to the TGT. And that's exactly what I mean. Same thing with this. You know, it doesn't even sound as good. Now you can upgrade these paddles right here. There's one big difference also that I notice with, let's say the podium versus CSL Elite. There is a little bit of play here. Now let's see if I can, I don't know how I'm gonna manage to hold this. I think that's kind of impossible. Can I, wait, dude, I'm gonna do something creative here. All right, I'll put my leg on this, okay? Now look, listen, I'm gonna lift this up. Do you hear that? It has a little bit of play in it. So when you move this up and down, it'll kind of have some play. So when you're racing, you get a little bit of a rattle with this being connected. And this is, like I said, this is the better rim that's connected on it, right? That's somewhat annoying. It's not a deal breaker, but I'm just saying it's something to at least note. So with this, I mean, it is complete. I, I can't even, I mean, that is me like yanking it and it's completely solid. All right, guys, so to wrap this up, you know, who is this rim for, or who's this wheelbase for? You know, is it worth it for you to go out and spend $1,800 on this nice wheelbase when you have something like the, you know, the CSL Elite, you know, right here, or you can get yourself the TGT if uh, Gran Turismo Sport is something that you play. Now, this is my honest opinion. Now, I will tell you from me doing hot laps over and over with the Fanatic Podium, that I have hit consistently about two to three tenths faster on my lap times, okay? Like even the lap time at Dragon Trail, that was faster than normal. So I am running faster lap times with this wheelbase for me. So I think that if you are more of an intermediate or experienced driver, you will see a pace improvement with this wheel. With that being said, do I think it's worth it, you know, spending $1,800 on that, or you could spend, you know, 450 bucks for this wheelbase? Absolutely not. I would not upgrade to this just because I'm trying to be faster. That's not a major time difference. And also depending on your experience, you might not see any bit of a time increase if you get this wheelbase. That's just me. It just happened to be that way. And it also might be because I'm not getting arm pain, maybe I'm more comfortable. So do not think that upgrading to this, you're just going to instantly be faster because I was. That's not something, that's not why I would buy this. I would buy this because maybe you're a more experienced driver and you've had the other belt driven wheels for a while and you kind of want to change it up a little bit. You know, you have a little bit of money saved up, you want a premium product and you just want to change and you know that you're going to be sim racing for a while. This is for someone who's been racing for a while. They know they're committed to sim racing and they have that extra cash to throw around. 
or if you're just someone in general, let's say you just started and you just, you know, you have money and you just like really nice quality products. Well, you're not going to argue with this. The way this feels, this nice Alcatara on the side, this might be for you just because you want something nice. But in general, I think for a lot of sim racers that just want to maybe get started, or even if you're just, you know, you have a T150 or something, moving up to a CSL Elite like this is honestly plenty. I mean, this thing is great. I, you, can, you can feel plenty of immersion and force feedback with a CSL Elite. It's obviously just not going to be as good as their premium product. But anyway, guys, I hope this helped all of you that are watching. If any of you are considering getting this and you have any questions about tuning settings, I will make a specific video on the tuning settings that I made for this podium. But I just wanted to give you my impressions without any bias. This is really just 100% how I feel. And I hate to see people go out and spend a lot of money and not really 100% know what they're going to get. So I thought that maybe making a video like this would be a good idea. But anyway, I hope this helps some of you guys. And I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.